Yamuna Chira Vana Chasi Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bharadhari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bharadhari Yashodanandana prachajanarangana Yashodanandana prachajanarangana Yamuna tira vanachari Yamuna Kira Vanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hari ko, 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 Prabhupada Jai Shri Prabhupada Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane 
Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Sri Charine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschachade Shantarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we heard how uh, Narada Muni had gone to meet with Hanuman. And uh, Narada Muni and his enthusiasm, he came there in Kimpurusha tweet and he saw Hanuman and Narada said, he's yelling out, Jai, glories to you, Sri Raguna, to the beloved of Sri Janaki, all glories, glories to the elder brother, Sri Lakshman, who is glorifying Lord Ramachandra in this way. Just like we hear people chant, Ramachandra Bhagwan Ki Jai. Right? So, Similarly, Hanuman, no, rather, Narada is in that mood. He's glorifying Lord Ram. So Hanuman, hearing Narada Muni glorify Lord Ram, Hanuman is very happy, naturally. Hanuman jumped up and he stood and he caught Narada by the neck, around the neck. He was so happy to hear him glorify the names of Lord Ramachandra. And Narada is so overjoyed. He's also in ecstasy. So the two of them are in great ecstasy. Narada tells Hanuman that today you are the dearest devotee of the Lord. Today, just by seeing you, I too have become dear to the Lord. So this is the nature of the greatest devotee, that you just see them and you become purified by them. Right? There's different kinds of devotees. Lord Chaitanya was asked by the residents from Kulinagram. The devotee from Kalinagram came to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and said, I'm a householder, I'm, an, I'm very fallen, how can I make advancement? So Lord Chaitanya told him, you should chant the holy name incessantly and serve the Vaishnavas. And so then he asked Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu how to recognize a Vaishnava. You're telling me to serve the Vaishnava, so how do I recognize who is the Vaishnava? So Lord Chaitanya said, anyone who chants the holy name one time, he's considered a Vaishnava. You can serve him. So then the next year, the same devotee came back to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and again he asked Lord Chaitanya how to recognize a Vaishnava. And this time Lord Chaitanya said, that person who regularly chants the holy name, then he is a Vaishnava. And so then the next year, the same devotee came back again. And again he asked Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, 
how to recognize a Vaishnava. And this time Lord Chaitanya said, that person who simply by seeing him makes other people chant the holy name, he is a Vaishnava. So here you have the example, Narada Muni is saying to Hanuman, that simply by seeing you, I'm, I'm feeling ecstasy. So simply by seeing you, I become dear to the Lord. People would just see Lord Chaitanya and they would become filled with Krishna Prem. And those other people would see those people who saw Lord Chaitanya they wouldn't see Lord Chaitanya, but they saw people who saw Lord Chaitanya, and they would get Krishna Prem. And in this way, Krishna Prem was given to so many people. So that is the highest platform. It just simply by seeing a person, you give them Krishna conscious. So this is why devotees, we like to they like to go everywhere, let people see the devotees, let them see you in Tilak with a nice clean head and a shika, right? Then people know, they think, oh, Hare Krishna. They just see you and they chant the holy name. This is very good. Okay, so Narada has come there. He wants to glorify Hanuman. So Hanuman brought Narada in before his deity. Hanuman was worshipping a big deity of Lord Ramachandra. And he brought Narada in and sat him down. He sat Hanuman down, he sat uh, Narada down and he wants to, he wants to hear what he has to say. Of course, Hanuman was not very happy to hear himself glorified like that. But Narada was glorifying him. You're the greatest devotee. You're the greatest, you've got the greatest mercy from the Lord. Narada says, no one can compare to you. You're always immersed in an ocean of ecstatic worship of the Lord, enjoying it as newer and newer at every moment. So this is Narada glorifying the Lord. And then he describes all the different ways in which Hanuman had been serving the Lord. He says to Hanuman, you are the Lord's servant, his friend, his carrier, his seat, his flag, his umbrella, his canopy, his fan. You are his bard, his advisor, his doctor, his general, his best helper, the expander of his infinite glories. So this is the, all the attributes of Hanuman that he's able to serve Lord Ramachandra in so many wonderful ways. One of the things which Hanuman does, I was explaining about his tail, that Hanuman's tail is very big and uh, very powerful. So Hanuman uses his tail Sometimes he will use his tail as a fan to bring, to, to allow cool air to go in the body of Lord Ramachandra. And sometimes Hanuman will use his tail like an umbrella, as I told yesterday, like a white umbrella, because that is what the king is supposed to have. So Hanuman's tail would serve as a fan, it would serve as an umbrella. It would serve as a, a screen from the hot sun rays. Hmm. 
So Hanuman would, and it would be also the flag. Hanuman's tail was like a flag. So in this way, some of the different ways Hanuman is serving Lord Ram. He's the carrier for the Lord. He's, his, he's preferred even to Garuda. Even compared to Garuda, Hanuman is a better carrier than Lord, than, than Garuda for carrying Lord Ramachandra. Uh, Hanuman can carry Lakshman and Lord Rama at the same time. And Hanuman is a bard, means he can, he can compose poetry, glorifying Lord Rama. He composes nice verses. And in Kim Purusha, there's also Arista Nemi. Arista Nemi is one of the associate, one of the devotees there, and he is also a beautiful singer. And he will sing beautiful songs, glorifying the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra. So Hanuman's very happy to hear it. And then there's a host of Gandharvas in Kimpurusha Loka. The many, many Gandharvas are also residing there. And they're singing all the glories of Lord Ramachandra. And, and this is what keeps Hanuman alive. Hanuman couldn't, he wouldn't survive without being able to hear the, the glorification of Lord Ramachandra. So this is a wonderful nature of Hanuman. Uh, he will be the general for the army of Lord Ramachandra, especially in the battle of Lanka. They were talking, there was some talk about uh, devotees, our devotees, we're very weakly, we're all weaklings, you know. But Prabhupada said, well, in the history of the world, there were two great wars. One war was the Battle of Wanka, and the other war was Kurukshetra. And he said, in both the wars, the heroes were Vaishnavas. In the Kurukshetra war, Arjuna was a hero, and in the battle of Lanka, Hanuman was a hero. He said they are both Vaishnavas, the heroes in both these wars. So he said, devotees are not so timid. <laughs> they may appear to be timid, but when it comes to when it comes to um, making our own ground, standing on our own ground then we can also display our uh, heroism. Hanuman is a great hero. So devotees, sometimes we have to be willing to also be a little bold and aggressive and assert ourselves. So Hanuman is, he's the doctor for Lord Ramachandra when Lord Ramachandra will get wounds on his body, it will be Hanuman who will treat him. And it was Hanuman who brought the herbs from the Ganga Madana mountain. So in this way, Hanuman is doing all of these different services. Uh, Narada says, you surrendered yourself entirely to the Lord and you received his highest mercy. You dedicated your life to, to topics of his transcendental glories. You increased the bliss of the devotees sheltered by him. You are the best. You are the best of saints, greater even than others like Garuda. So Hanuman is being praised that he, he did so much service for the Lord. 
by his person, he was fortunate that he was able to be in the personal association of Lord Ramachandra. Not everybody gets that opportunity. Just like in Prabhupada's time, you know, Prabhupada had, had so many devotees around him, but not everyone was engaged by Prabhupada. Not only a few devotees were close, were intimate associates of Srila Prabhupada, and they had the opportunity to serve him. You know, like to give Prabhupada massage. Prabhupada would have massage twice a day. And, and or to cook for Prabhupada. You know, maybe you think we would get to do things like clean Prabhupada's room when he goes out. When Prabhupada would go on the morning walk, then we would go in his room and clean his room. Clean the room, put in clean shoes every day, put in the clean gadi and everything for Prabhupada. Put nice flower vase and like that. And then we'd be out by the time Prabhupada came back, we wouldn't be in the room. But only a few devotees were actually with Prabhupada. So the same you could understand with Lord Ramachandra. Although there was an army of monkeys, there was only a few monkeys who were intimate associates of Lord Rama, like Hanuman. Because Hanuman has some very special power. He's, first of all, he's very, very tall and he's very strong. So Lord Ramachandra is able to use him in his service. And even when it comes to giving a massage, Hanuman gets to give the massage, not Garuda. It's Hanuman who gets to give Lord Ramachandra the massage. So Hanuman the, the massage the lotus feet of Lord Ramachandra. Very fortunate soul, right? So Hanuman had this opportunity to do personal service for Lord Ramachandra. He was doing personal service for him. And I told yesterday how Lord Ramachandra gave him the ring, his own ring, to, to go and show to Sita, to show that he's coming from Lord Ramachandra. So Hanuman was given this opportunity to render very intimate service to Lord Ramachandra. But when Lord Ramachandra decides to leave the world, he tells Hanuman, you should stay. So this is a, this is a problem which Hanuman faces. He's thinking that, well, he took Sugriva. Sugriva was also a monkey, but he, go, he went back to Godhead with him. He went back to Godhead with Lord Ramachandra. And all the people, all the citizens of Koshala, they all went back to Godhead. They all went with Lord Ramachandra to the spiritual world. But Hanuman was left here. Hanuman was left to remain. So Hanuman is thinking a little bit, he's thinking a little bit that Lord Ramachandra has got a hard heart. He's hard hearted. I did so much service and he's leaving me here. So nobody can, nobody can understand the mind of the Lord. Some people get the, get the opportunity to render personal service like Hanuman, but it doesn't mean you get the opportunity to always be with the Lord. Just because you do some personal service doesn't make you anything. Of course, Prabhupada appreciated people who could do service. He'd, he'd get them to do more service, right? <laughs> they do some service, then they have they get more service to do. It's not that you do service and then you, you just sit, sit and be with 
be with Lord Ramachandra and don't do anything. So you do service, you have to go and do more service. Just like Prabhupada was traveling in the train, when he came to India, he was traveling in the, for the devotees that they did, we didn't have any temples. The devotees had just come from America with Prabhupada and they came to India. No temples, nothing. So they're traveling different places, they're going to programs and they went up to, they went up to Kashmir and they did a big program up there and they were on the train, they were coming back down and the train came through Delhi. And when they were in the Delhi station, one man came and he saw Prabhupada there in the train and he was speaking to Prabhupada. And he said to his, he says, Swamiji, why don't you have a temple in Delhi? And the man said, you can even stay at my place. You can, you can stay at my house. And you can have a temple, make a temple there. And so Prabhupada immediately, he was sitting in the train. Prabhupada was in the good compartment and maybe he was traveling first class and he had a couple of devotees with him. So he turned to one of them, he said, Guru Das, he said, Guru Das, get off the train. He said, go and open a temple here in Delhi. <laughs> and he said, you can take some people with you. And so he got to take a few people with them. And Prabhupada said to him, here's 50 rupees. <laughs> <laughs> so this was how the Delhi temple began. Guru Daskas, he was sitting there with Prabhupada, enjoying Prabhupada's association in the train, talking to Prabhupada. And then because this one man came and said, you should have a temple here. Prabhupada said, okay, yeah, Guru Das, get off the train. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> so difficult. And he said, you should preach to the politicians. <laughs> Meet Indira Gandhi. <laughs> And he did, they did, they met in Dira Gandhi somehow, and they did very wonderful preaching. But it was not easy, there were many struggles. <laughs> so that's the danger, being too close. You get too close to the spiritual master, <laughs> he may give you those kind of service, you get that kind of service. So don't get too close. But don't get too far away also. That's the idea. All right, so. So Hanuman was very surrendered, very dedicated. He said, you're the best of saints, greater even than the others like Garuda. He was a better carrier than Garuda, and he was a better servant than Garuda. He carried Lord Ramachandra on his back, in the big broad back. Indeed, your devotion, Narada tells Hanuman, your devotion for the Lord is absolutely pure, for you consider nothing more valuable than the pleasure of serving him. You delighted all the devotees by speaking to that best of generous lords, these words. And we're going to hear what he spoke. These words are very famous. No liberation destroys the bondage of material existence. I have no desire for liberation in which I would forget that you are the master and I am your servant. So this is a very famous statement of Hanuman and it's quoted also in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami quotes it. But nobody knows the origin, nobody knows where it comes from. But this is Hanuma, Hanumana Bhakya, the words of Hanuman. He says like that, uh, that liberation destroys the bondage of material existence. But I have, I have no 
desire for liberation if it means that I will forget that I am the servant and you are my master. So this is, this is our Vaishnava philosophy. This is the essence of Vaishnava philosophy. The, the Lord is the master and we are the so Hanuman is a great Vaishnava. Uh, so hearing, hearing Lord Ramachandra, because Narada Muni is glorifying Hanuman, but at the same time, he's also glorifying Lord Ramachandra and he's reminding Hanuman how he had that opportunity to do personal service for Lord Ramachandra. So just hearing all of this and reminding Hanuman about the wonderful service which he had done for Lord Ramachandra, Hanuman becomes overwhelmed with ecstasy. He's shedding tears. Just the memories of how he'd associated with Lord Ramachandra and how he'd been so fortunate to be given service. So Hanuman says, says uh, why are you doing this to such a wretch as myself? I am devoid of the lotus feet of Lord Ramachandra. Why do you make me cry? by reminding me of how the Lord has neglected me. Hanuman says the Lord has neglected me. Right? Because, because Lord Ramachandra has gone off, he went back to his spiritual abode and he told Hanuman to stay here. He said, if I am really the Lord's servant, then why did he forcibly, forcibly, forcibly abandon me when he took with him to his spiritual kingdom, his dear devotees, including Sugriva and all the residents of Goshala, Koshala. But then Hanuman says to Narada, you're very kind to me because I have had the good fortune to engage in his service. You conclude that the Lord has given me his favor. <laughs> so Hanuman is telling to Narada Muni, don't think that just because I, I did personal service for Lord Ramachandra that he gave me his favor. The favor of the Lord, well, Hanuman saying the favor of the Lord was when he took all those devotees back to Godhead with them. But at the same time, Hanuman is also appreciating that Narada Muni is reminding him that he did service for the Lord. So Hanuman has to admit that he, he's been very fortunate. He was very fortunate because he did get personal association. And Prabhupada says, you know, people who have that opportunity to associate personally with the spiritual master are very fortunate. But they have to take advantage. And it's not that you always get it. Just like in the beginning, Prabhupada's secretary Prabhupada had one householder couple serve him. One, the lady was called Govinda Devi Dasi and her husband Gorsundar. They were young American couple and they came to Prabhupada in the very beginning of the movement. And they were both artists. Actually, they did wonderful drawings. They were pencil drawings which were originally in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya book. If you ever see the original printing of the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, 
There's no color pictures. There's pencil drawings there of all of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Very beautiful, very, very beautiful drawings. But somehow the BBT editors, they took out these pictures and they put color pictures. Color anyway, they were Prabhupada's servants. And Govinda Devi Dasi was like Prabhupada's secretary. But then Prabhupada sent them, he told them, go to Hawaii. I want you to open a temple. You go to Hawaii. They didn't want to go. They wanted to be with Prabhupada. But Prabhupada said, no, you go. I want you to go and open a temple. I want you to go and preach. And then there was this other devotee, this one, his name was Hari Kesha. And Prabhupada sent him. He was Prabhupada's secretary also. But somehow, you know, sometimes, you know, Prabhupada wanted to change the secretary. So Prabhupada told him, you go to Eastern Europe communist, you know, the socialist bloc at that time and Prabhupada's time, there was East Germany and West Germany. And there was a wall, there was a barricade right down the middle of Germany. And so everything on the East side was like communist, socialist. The West side was open. So the devotees were sending a lot of books and there was a lot of potential for preaching in Eastern Europe. As you can see now, we have a lot of devotees from Russia and Ukraine and all of these different countries. There are many devotees there and they've done a lot, a lot of preaching. You go to America, you'll see a lot of Russians there also. You go to London, there's Russians there, they're everywhere, you know. The, these devotees from Ukraine, Easter, Eastern Europe. So uh, Prabhupada told Harikesh, you go there, go and preach. And Pra he said, Prabhupada, there's there's no vegetables there. In the winter it's so cold, there's nothing to eat. You have to eat meat. Then Prabhupada said, then eat meat, but go there. Mm. So you, the, Prabhupada would force. People didn't want to go. They didn't want to leave Prabhupada, but Prabhupada would force them to go. And when they went, they would do good. You know, they would do really good. They were very, they were very qualified people, very special people. Like Hari Kesha, he was a very talented person. Could do a lot of things. And they did a lot. They made many devotees. They printed a lot of books. Distributed. But they didn't like to leave. So the same way Hanuman is feeling that, you know, he said that I didn't get the favor of Lord Ramachandra. Look, I'm here. He, he left me here. He took Sugriva with him. Sugriva, you know, he's also one of the monkeys. So he's like one of the competitors. You know, maybe you, know, you don't know. You know, when 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 you're around Prabhupada. People would be like competing with each other, trying to win Prabhupada's praise or get Prabhupada's attention. So you could imagine similarly with what Ramachandra, all the monkeys, they would be all competing with each other, trying to get praise and get the attention of Lord Ramachandra. But it was actually Hanuman who got the greatest attention because Hanuman he was the only one who could jump across to Lanka. None of the other bears could do it. None of the other apes, monkeys could do it. Only Hanuman could do it. And you see some, these, some of these are, some of these apes, uh, monkeys, they're, they're also in Krishna Leela. That they come in Krishna Leela, Devida, Devida, the, the, the monk, he was there, he got killed by Balaram, right? And Jambavan. Jambavan, he's also from Ramalila. He's in Krishna Lila. So these are they very special creatures. They live so long. You know? Very powerful. So 
there were great personalities, Jambavan. We had this one devotee, his name was Jambavan in America, probably somebody got the name. He was huge, you know, he's really big and strong. <laughs> he's a brahmachari, Jambavan. Very nice. Uh, okay. But now, oh, who's speaking? Hanuman is speaking. Hanuman is telling the Radha Muni. He says, now the Lord has descended to Mathura Puri. The Lord has gone to Mathura Puri and he's displaying the summit of his opulence and powers. All the mercy he has shown, all the mercy he has shown me cannot equal even a speck of the mercy he has shown the saintly Pandavas. The, any more than a molecule of earth can equal Mount Sumeru. So now Hanuman, you know, he, he wants to put the attention towards the Pandavas. He doesn't want Narada Muni thinking that he's a great devotee. Narada Muni had come to uh, Hanuman thinking he was the greatest, he got the greatest mercy. But Hanuman says, no, no, you should go to the Pandavas. Go and see the Pandavas and you will see real mercy. You will see how the Lord gives the mercy to the Pandavas. The Pandavas, they had to suffer so many difficulties. They went through so many. And these, these difficulties which they went through, you could say this was also the arrangement of the Lord. That as a super soul in the heart of everyone, he arranged all the things which happened to the Pandavas how they suffered, all their things. They had to go in exile for 12 years. And then they had to do one year incognito. And the, the house which they were in was made in shellac. It got burned to ashes. And then their wife got uh, disgraced. They tried to rip off her clothing. And they were given poison at one point. Bhima ate all the cake and died practically. And so many different, different things happened to the Pandavas. All of these different things, this was the arrangement of the Lord. He arranged all these trials for them to show how strong they were in devotional service and to show their determination and their righteousness, all their good qualities which they manifested. Right? We say when the, when the going gets tough, then the tough get going. So the Pandavas, they're really tough. And they had really tough time. But they came through it all. They came through it all. And then at the end, then there's the battle of Kurukshetra. And with the Kurukshetra war, the odds were against them. And they had to fight these huge odds. But Lord Krishna is on their side. And they're ultimately, they're assured of victory. So Hanuman is going to he's going to tell all the glories of the Pandavas to Narada Muni. He wants Narada Muni that he should go and see the Pandavas. You go and understand these people. They they have really got the mercy of the Lord. If you go there, Hanuman Hanuman says he says by sending poison and many other calamities one after another to trouble the Pandavas from their childhood, the Lord deliberately showed their determination, religion, fame, their wisdom, their devotion, their ecstatic love. The Lord acted as their servant advisor, messenger, charioteer, and court attendant. 
He even kept watch for them at night, followed them in processions, and even offered them praise and obeisances. Hanuman, you know, the, Narada was glorifying Hanuman that he did so many things, so many different ways. He was serving Lord Ramachandra. Lord Ram, now Hanuman is describing so many different ways the Lord is serving the Pandavas. <laughs> He's telling how Lord Krishna is serving the Pandavas. Of course, he became the charioteer for Arjuna and he became the messenger for Maharaj Yudhisthir, taking the message to Dhritarashtra and Duryodhan, requesting them to make peace and let's avoid this Kurukshetra war. And Lord Krishna would be like their servant because the Lord is controlled by his pure devotees. One of the reasons why pure devotional service is rarely achieved is because Krishna becomes purchased by his pure devotees. The, devo the, the Lord becomes obliged to serve them. In the battle of Kurukshetra, when Arjuna's life was in danger, Lord Krishna had to break his promise to save the life of Arjuna. So he broke his promise. He promised he wouldn't fight. But when Arjuna's life is in danger, he had to fight. He had to break his promise. And sometimes Lord Krishna will will be their night watchman. Just like Lakshman. Lakshman used to guard Lord Ramachandra. He wouldn't sleep at night. He'd stay awake the whole night. And Lord Chaitanya also, in Chaitanya Leela, after Lord Chaitanya took initiation and came back from Gaya, then he told all the devotees, we will have kirtan every night. He told all the devotees, come to the home of Srivastakur, we will have kirtan. No need to sleep at night. We will just do kirtan all night. When Prabhupada was sick, and I was it 1973, I think it was 1973, Prabhupada was sick. So, was decided we would do kirtan all night. The temples, we were doing kirtan 24 hours. And we would go in the temple at night, in the middle of the night, have kirtan for Prabhupada. We would do these kind of things. It was incredible to be in the temple at night, to do kirtan all night. Of course, that's how you're supposed to observe a codice. Full, if you do full a codice, you don't you don't eat, you don't drink, and you don't sleep. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did a codice, it was like he wouldn't eat, he wouldn't drink, he wouldn't sleep. I was in. Uh, the Philippines with Tamal Krishna Maharaj one time, Tamal Krishna Maharaj came there and he got all of us to do a codice and we stayed awake the whole night. <laughs> he was there and so quite a few devotees were there and, and we would have kirtan in the night, you know, we have kirtan and then chant some japa, and then more kirtan and that way it was nice, you know, if you have to do it on your own, it's a bit difficult. But if you have an association with the devotees, you be with the devotees and chanting, and japa, it's not so bad. It's very nice. And you can't just say it's a day to increase.
So in, in Malaysia also they do that. They stay awake the whole night. And do you do it here? Oh. Okay. So sometimes you can introduce it here. But quite a lot of people used to come. Um, the Tamil people, they like to do that by Kunta Ikarat, yeah? Maybe the, the, the Kannada people do it? They do it in the... Uh, yeah, I was hearing the Madhva say, oh, do Nirjau, they call it. So, these are things, you know, we, we give more importance to preaching. They don't do too much preaching, but the idea of Prabhupada said, you know, do service. But there's a famous pastime, the devotees were all fasting, the Godiya Mat, and the, the invitation came for a program. And they said, no, no, we're all fasting. So Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati heard there's a program. He said, cook prasadam, everybody take prasadam, go for the program. He said, preaching is more important than fasting. You make more advancement by preaching than by fasting. Okay, any questions? Yes. Yeah, it's here in the book. You can recite or make notes. Yeah, I can. You come. I have it. I, I wrote it out yesterday. I have it on oh. a piece of paper upstairs. Okay. Yeah. It's, it, it, the third line says, Bhavan Prabhu Aham Dasa. I just, I just memorized that one line. There's four, okay. it's, it's four lines. But Aham Bhavan Prabhu Aham Dasa. And then I can't remember the last line. And also, you mentioned about uh, Rupa Goswami's uh, also. Similar shloka. Is it the same Iha Esya Harer Dase? That's the shloka. Karmana Manasagira. No, no. It's the same verse. Hanuman verse. Okay. Rupa Goswami, he, he recites, he's got many slokas in yes, Bhakti Rasamrita yes. Sindhu. But what, what are you asking about? This was Iha Esya Harer Dase. Iha Dasya Harer Dase. That's Srimad Bhagavatam. That's Srimad Bhagavatam. Niha Yasya Harer Dashi Karmana Manasagira. Yeah. Nikola Jivan Mukta Sauchate. Right. Who is a Jivan Mukta? Yes, yes, Jivan. Now that's different. That's engaging body, mind, and words. Then you're a Jivan Mukta. One who uses body, mind, and words for the service of Krishna is Jivan Mukta. But this verse, Hanuman is saying, I don't want liberation. If, if there's anything, if I'm going to forget that I'm your servant and you're my master, then I don't want that liberation. Although liberation is appealing and it gets you free from the material existence. You know, we do want to get liberated. And, but Hanuman says that if I'm going to forget that I'm the servant and you're my master, I don't want that. It's very nice. Thanks for that. Okay. Any other question? So, do you remember the? Oh yes, please. Question. Hare Krishna, Mother. Thank you, Mother. Uh, he said that Prabhupada wanted us to go back home, back to body in one lifetime. But also in one of the purport, it tells generally it takes three lifetimes for a conditioned living entity. So, who says takes three? It is written in one of the purport that Prabhupada writes generally a conditioned living entity, it takes three lifetimes for him to go back. So, once it just starts chanting, where is that? Picture? In the Bhagavatam only, I don't remember the exact word. But I've never seen it. Many Are times. You, have you seen it? it? Huh? 
I have heard many times and once I have read also, Maharaj. I will try to see. If I can okay, if you find it, show me. Yeah. So, and we surely hear that Prabhupada wants us to go back home in one lifetime. Yeah. So, just wanted to know because you had mentioned about our services should increase as time goes. So, how to, and generally we see devotional progress is very gradual. Uh, the nature of devotional progress is very gradual. So, how to understand that we are increasing it properly because we have to balance other things also like our sadhana and our relationships. So, what is the guideline which can help us? Now, it is a time to increase our services. Uh, because it is different for different individual, for ourselves also and when we are guiding others also. Well, first of all, you say devotional service, our progress is very gradual. Well, it can be gradual if you're gradual. If you have a gradual approach, then it will be gradual. But it can also be accelerated. You know, and you can put yourself into the fire. <laughs> you know, go into the fire. You know, you can hand, hold back and just get, take it gradually, step by step. Or you can go in the fire. You know, go forward. Take, take more responsibility, you know, you go out there and do something, you want to do something for Prabhupada, you can make progress quick. If you're ready, if that's what you want, you can do it. It doesn't have to be so gradual. That's, sometimes people have that approach, you know, oh, don't push me Prabhu, just take, oh, take it easy Prabhu, it should be gradual. <laughs> you be so gradual, you never make progress, you know. It's, sometimes you've got to be a little bit more, we've got to feel the urgency for Krishna consciousness. Just, you know, Prabhupada wasn't taking it gradually when he went to America on his own with no money. <laughs> He wasn't thinking gradually. No, Prabhupada says, shoot the rhinoceros, go for hunt, go hunting, hunt the rhino. If you hunt rabbits and you miss the rabbit, everyone will laugh. Oh, you missed the rabbit, ha ha ha. But if you go for the rhino and you miss the rabbit, they say, well, you know, <laughs> that, that was. Uh, Understandable rhinos are, you know, they're they're really huge. Have you seen a rhino? If you ever see them, they're so big and so strong. You know that. Wow, you know they're just solid. You know, so hunting rhinos, you got to be really bold. But that was Prabhupada's mood. You can read Shamsundar Prabhu's book. Chasing rhinos with the Swami, wonderful. And he describes the different rhinos he went after. One after another, one after another, one rhino after another, you know. It's wonderful. So that there's no taking it easy in Krishna consciousness. You want to go, you want, you, another devotee used to give the example, he, he said like an arrow. Arrow has to always be going forward. If it's not going forward, it will go down. So our devotional service is a bit like that. If you're not going forward, you're going to go down. So you don't want to just sit back and take it easy and say, oh, it's just, Take it easy, Prabhu, just don't push me uh, gradually. <laughs> you gotta go forward. You gotta you know, go in the fire. <laughs> so that's Krishna consciousness. You want to come back to China? <laughs> North Korea is open, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
so easy. Some parts of India are very difficult. Okay, Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Thank <laughs> you.